I'm going to finish off this section on the basics of analog electronics with a concept which is so important that I'm going to call it the fundamental theorem of analog electronics. This is because it has to be considered whatever type of circuit that we want to design, whether it be an instrumentation circuit or a communication circuit. And understanding it will give you a fundamental insight into analog systems design. The first point to grasp is that every signal we wish to process has a minimum bandwidth associated with it, and our circuits must pass this bandwidth. If we do not pass it, then the signal will either be corrupted or completely disappear. To illustrate this, consider a square wave as shown on the screen, carrying a message consisting of ones and zeros. Each one or zero, each bit in other words, of a transmitted signal lasts for half a millisecond. Now, you should remember from video 10, and if you don't remember this, it would be worth revising it before going further, that a square wave has a frequency spectrum like that shown in the diagram. As we've seen, all these frequencies are necessary for a clean square wave, and if we don't have all of them, then the square wave is degraded. But here is a fundamental question. How much of the frequency spectrum, or if you like, how many of the harmonics, do we actually need to retain the information in the message? In other words, the sequence of ones or zeros. We can cut out these harmonics, these frequencies, one at a time and observe a result. Eventually, we'll have cut out everything but the fundamental of the fastest part of the message. That is a message which is changing from one to zero most quickly with a duration of half a millisecond. This leaves a signal as shown below. If we cut out any more harmonics, we'd lose this fastest part of the sine wave and we'd also lose the fastest part of the signal. So we would end up with a signal shown in the diagram or one very similar to it anyway. So there is a signal that we have to leave in in order to be able to process the fastest part of the message we're trying to transmit. If we cut this out, the message disappears and we cannot decode it fully. This corresponds to the fastest part of the signal as shown above. We can work out what this fundamental is from what we know. So if we try and transmit or process this signal, the circuits that we use to do this must have a bandwidth of at least one kilohertz or parts of the signal will be missing and we will not be able to retrieve them. Now from the last video, we saw that the minimum detectable signal is defined by the noise floor of the system. The signal must be greater than the noise in order to be detectable. But you may remember that the formula for thermal noise or Chonson noise has a bandwidth associated with it. You can see from the formula that to minimize the noise, we want to minimize the bandwidth. So here we have a fundamental point in signal processing. To minimize the noise in a system, we would like to minimize the bandwidth. This will mean that we can detect the smallest possible signals. But all signals themselves have a minimum bandwidth requirement, which we cannot go below or else we would lose the signal. This means that to detect the smallest possible signal in the system, the bandwidth must be set at the minimum required to pass the signal. However, a little bit more thought will indicate that the situation in many cases is more complex than this. For a start, sometimes our signals are rather large, and so we're not interested in processing tiny ones, and we're not so interested in the noise. In these cases, we don't want to reduce the bandwidth too much, as it makes a signal harder to process. You can probably see this if you look at the wibbly-wobbly sine wave of the minimum bandwidth signal, which is much more difficult to process and to discriminate than the nice clean square wave of a signal which has a larger bandwidth. In other signals, it's not perhaps so clear what exactly the minimum bandwidth is of a signal. Take music, for example. This doesn't suddenly stop carrying information as we cut out to different frequencies. It just becomes progressively more muffled. That is, or we say, that it loses fidelity 
or quality. But again, if a signal is large, the noise is not always our primary concern. And in this case, a large bandwidth, but one which is controlled, is actually decidable for higher quality. All circuits have a trade-off between those two different quantities, noise and bandwidth. You can perhaps now see the importance of filters as circuits which control and shape the bandwidth.